Most homeowners who have an empty room to rent aren't making extra money with it. And it breaks my heart because all they want is to get out of debt, pay off the house, and save for retirement. And the money is right there in their mattress. There's just one thing holding them back from tapping into a steady stream of income. Imagine this. You're carrying the freshly washed sheets to your guest bedroom, and as you're putting the fitted sheet on the mattress, you notice a hole in the side. Hmm, where'd that come from? And as you look closer, you notice that inside the hole the stuffing looks kind of funny. It's kind of green and pointy instead of white and fluffy. And you reach in and you start pulling out fistfuls of cash. How would you feel? You'd probably be excited and relieved, wouldn't you? And you'd go running to your spouse shouting, Honey, our money problems are solved. But what if you never reached in to get the money? that you held back because that little voice in your head started saying things like, don't reach in there because anything could be in there. A rat might bite me. Or the mattress stuffing is old and I don't want to touch it because I don't know what it's made of. Maybe it'll make my hand itchy or worse. And if you listen to that little voice, the money would stay in that mattress right there, so close yet untapped. But if you're like me, you're not going to let that stop you, right? So you go get a stick and poke it around in there real good. Okay, now you're satisfied that the rat scenario is ruled out. And then, let's say you have a flashlight, and you shine it around and you look closely, just to be sure. Nope, no rats, just money. Would you reach in then? Okay, well maybe you'd put on a glove first, just to be safe. Well, the good news is that, figuratively speaking, there is a bunch of money in your mattress today, right now, and you can use it to generate passive income simply by renting a place to sleep for the night to a short-term guest. But why don't you? I'm betting it's because that little voice in your head is saying things like, I don't want strangers in my house, or I like my privacy, I want to be able to walk around the house in my underwear, or what if the guests steal my stuff? or worse. Well, today I'm going to show you how to shine a light on those fears and mitigate and eliminate them so you could put those mattresses to work for you, bringing in up to $9,000 extra per month and solve your money problems for good. Hello, my name is Sue Oyuela and I'm a streamer, which stands for Short-Term Rental Automation Master. And I believe that once you remove your limiting beliefs, you will open up the floodgates for wealth to come your way. I believe you just need the right consultant to show you how to make money from short-term rentals by setting everything up the right way without having to give up your privacy or jeopardize your safety. So let's get started. I want to welcome you to today's webinar called The Mattress Money Machine, where you'll learn how to make money safely with short-term rentals and never have to interact with your guests. And in today's lesson, I'll be teaching you the three steps to making up to $9,000 extra per month from your home. First, we'll talk about the setup. I'll show you how to set up a room in your house so you can make extra cash safely without having to interact with your guests. Then I'll show you how much money you can make by expanding your business and getting creative with space. And then the most important step, I'm going to show you how to attract a steady stream of great guests to keep the income coming in year-round. This is my promise to you during this webinar. Now, after that, I'll be making a special offer, but regardless of if you take me up on it or not, you will find tremendous value in this webinar. Plus, to thank you for showing up and being committed to staying until the end, I'm going to also give you my furnishing checklist, and it's a way to quickly set up a room to rent in your house. I discovered the hard way that there are things you put in a guest room and things you don't. It was an expensive lesson, so I'm going to give you my checklist to help you save money and save time. And I'm giving you this because I want to set you up for success right from the beginning. After all, I believe that this is the value of having a consultant, someone who's done it before and learned from their mistakes, and they can save you all the time and headaches of learning the hard way. Priceless. And my furnishing checklist is a $200 value that you're going to get for free just for staying till the end of the webinar. Oh, and I also have another free bonus that I'll tell you about a little later on. And just to give you a little background on me, in 2011, my husband and I started by renting a 10 by 12 shed in the backyard to short-term guests. 
We fixed it up, we added some curtains, and we listed it on a website called Airbnb as The Cozy Cabin. And it made $1,000 in the first month. I mean, the money was so good that I started creating listings for anywhere somebody could sleep in my house. And after nine months, I was making a steady income, enough to quit my full-time job as a manager, and then I began to explore other ways to use this wonderful tool called Airbnb. And in the process, I developed four different business models to create a six-figure income. And I built a business that created the financial freedom and lifestyle that my husband and I had always dreamed of. But back when we first discovered Airbnb, times were tough. We had just lost a couple of properties to foreclosure in the great real estate bubble of 2008. We were in debt to the tune of $167,000. And we were wondering how we'd ever pay off the house, much less start saving for retirement. And while we were still working our full-time jobs, we began renting rooms in our house, and we were running into lots of little problems and negative surprises here and there. So I started creating systems and solving problems and using technology to make things run more smoothly and efficiently. So, like I said, I quit my job after just nine months, and then my husband was able to quit his job too just one year later. And by the third year, we had paid off our entire debt. And I realized, this is life-changing money. People have to know about this. And as I began to think about how I could create a course to share this knowledge and make it easy for others to skip the learning curve and just go straight to making money, I discovered something key. That there was a repeatable process at the core of what I was doing. That there are four distinct phases to setting up and automating a short-term rental business. In phase one, you identify what you're going to rent and who you're going to rent it to. In phase two, you furnish, stage, and photograph the place. In phase three, you create the online listing and then you go live. And in phase four, the daily business management is where you bring it all together with systems to streamline and automate your short-term rental business. So I created an online course called the Airbnb Success Formula and began teaching homeowners how to make anywhere from a thousand to nine thousand dollars a month from their home. And that's why I'm teaching you this today, to help you get started making that life-changing money. So here's where you need to focus by turning off any distractions, put your cell phone on silent, close out any other internet tabs you have open, and get ready to take notes. Because today I want to share with you how you can make money safely with short-term rentals and never have to interact with your guests. Unless you want to, of course. Okay, so let's get started. So first let's talk about how you can set up a space for privacy and safety for the guests and for yourself. Let me start by sharing a little known secret with you. Did you know that by setting up a private space in your home for guests where you don't have to interact or even see them, you can actually charge more money? <laughs> Why is that? Well, because the guests actually prefer to have their privacy as much as you want yours. And this is a win-win situation because guests actually prefer to not have to see their host sometimes because it makes them feel like they're imposing when they're staying in someone's house. So this is great news for you because I'm officially giving you permission to set everything up so you don't have to interact with your guests. Fair enough? Okay, so remember, the more privacy you can provide for the guests, the more money you can charge. Now I want you to be thinking about your home specifically as we go over the four keys to how we go about creating a dedicated space for your guests. If you're not sure where to start or what to rent, see if you have anything that fits these criteria. First of all, you want to set it up so the guests have their own private entrance. Now, this could be a room inside your house or a separate room on your property. If you already have, let's say, a room over the garage or a pool house or maybe even a fixed up basement room, then that's the best place to start. However, if you have a room inside your home, and it has a private entrance, then you can get creative by blocking it off from the rest of the house so the guests don't come into your area. And you can do that by using like a large bookcase or maybe a Murphy bed, you know, one of those beds that folds up into a cabinet during the day. Or you can even hang some floor to ceiling curtains to cover up a door that leads to your area to dissuade the guests from using it. And then of course you just lock the door. Okay, so the next most important thing is for the guests to have their own private bathroom. And it needs to include a sink, toilet, and at least a shower, if not a bathtub and a shower. 
and in my experience you could charge up to 50% more for a room with a private bathroom. For example, in my house there are no private bathrooms, and I found that if a guest have to share a bathroom with their host or other guests, I can only charge about $50 a night. But if the guests have a private bathroom, I could charge $75 a night or more. So as you're trying to decide what to rent, you might consider this. Maybe you should let the guests stay in your master bedroom while you take the guest bedroom. This might actually be your best move. Okay, so now the guests have their own private room with a private entrance and a private bathroom. Now their next concern is, do they have to meet the hosts when they check in? <laughs> Funny, isn't it? The hosts are probably thinking the same thing. Do I have to greet the guests at all hours of the night? <sighs> No, my friend, you do not. Simply install a keyless entry system. The great thing about the keyless entry system is the peace of mind that it brings. With it, you can customize the code for each guest. I like to make the code the last four digits of their phone number, which makes it easy for them to remember. It brings peace of mind to the guest because they know that no one else has had that code and that it's obviously been changed for each guest. And it brings peace of mind to the host because the system not only allows you to control your door locks and see who's coming and going in your home, but it can also control up to 200 devices. This means that you could add a keypad to each guest room as well as your front door or even your own bedroom for safety and security. And keyless entry is so much more secure than having regular keys and so much simpler to handle. The system also allows you to add more devices such as lamps or cameras. By setting the timer to turn your lights on and off, it's a great safety feature and a deterrent to opportunistic burglars. You could also add a thermostat controller, which saves money on your electric bill. In fact, the keyless entry system is so powerful, it allows you to manage your home from a distance. This is the key to being able to travel and still make money from your home by renting to short-term guests. And last but definitely not least is parking. When it comes to parking, the right answer that the guests want to hear is that there is free on-site parking. So if you could dedicate a space in your driveway or on your property for the guest to park, you are golden. I mean, you'd be surprised how important solving the parking problem is for guests. Many cities have restrictions on parking, such as requiring a permit or only having paid parking options nearby. Now. If you have a situation like this, there are ways to handle it when it comes to accommodating short-term guests. However, if there's absolutely nowhere for your guests to park, then all you do is stress in your listing that there's no parking, and then you would put a positive spin on it by highlighting how close your place is to public transportation. All right, so now you know how to safely rent a room in your house to short-term guests without giving up your privacy. So feel free to run around the house in your underwear all you want. <laughs> it's just a few simple steps to setting it up and you're in business. Okay, so think about this. Would you rather rent to long-term tenants or short-term guests? So you may be thinking, okay, that's great. Now I can set up a room to rent in my house and rent it out, maybe just to a regular tenant. But why would you want to rent to short-term guests instead of long-term tenants? Here's something to take into consideration. When you rent to someone, you have a relationship with them and each of you takes on a particular role in that relationship. As I see it, you have three choices. So let me ask you this. Which of the following three roles and relationships would you prefer to have with someone living in your home? Would you like to take on the role of parent to a child? I mean, I don't know about you, but I get a little nervous when I read the room for rent ads in the paper, and they all say something like, no smoking, no drugs, no loud music. I mean, it seems to be such a common problem that landlords have to continually state it in the ad. And have you noticed that it just seems to be human nature that after a while folks start to get a little too comfortable? I mean, they start out great, you know, happy, respectful, they tell you everything you want to hear from the perfect tenant, but after about a month or so, you notice that they start to disrespect your house and your rules. You may begin to discover cigarette butts littering the ground which means they lied on their application. Super. And then you're investing in earplugs because they're playing video games at 2 in the morning and shouting at their friends through their headset. And gradually their dishes start to pile up in the sink. So now you're confronting your tenant about cleaning up after themselves and teaching them about common courtesy, putting you in a parent-child role. Very uncomfortable, right? Now, short-term guests, on the other hand, are super respectful. They ask 
if they should take off their shoes before they come in the house. They follow your house rules, and they are on their best behavior because they want a good review after their stay. Now, reviews are really the key to enforcing your house rules and making sure guests do not get too comfortable. This is something that Airbnb has built into their system, which protects you because it keeps the guests motivated to make a good impression on you as their host. Okay, so here's scenario number two. Would you like to take on the role of a landlord to a tenant? Now, believe it or not, a long-term tenant may not pay their rent on time. Shocking, I know. <laughs> Sarcasm. So what do you do if this happens? Well, you might try to resolve the situation peacefully by confronting the tenant and politely asking them to please pay the rent. And if the tenant for some reason cannot or will not, and an amicable resolution cannot be reached, then the eviction process begins. The long, drawn-out, expensive eviction process. And all the while, the tenant is still living in your house and not paying rent. This is an ugly, messy situation that you definitely want to avoid, right? Well, short-term guests, on the other hand, have automatic payments withdrawn from their bank account and directly deposited into your account by a third-party payment processor 24 hours after their stay begins. So you have no money to chase. What a relief. Okay, and here's the third option. Would you like to take on the role of host to a guest? Short-term guests pay about three times what a long-term tenant would. In my experience, a discount rate that you should never go below for a private room with a private bathroom is $50 a night. So we'll use that for an example. Now, if you multiply that by 30 nights in a month, it averages out to $1,500 per month. <laughs> wow! That's about three times what a long-term tenant would pay for a room in my house in the suburbs. And if your house is closer to where the guests want to be, then the nightly rate can be increased. It just all depends on how much the market will bear which is a fun exercise to test out, by the way, which we go over in the course. Okay, for example, if I want to rent a room in my house to a long-term tenant, I find that I could charge about $500 a month. So if you average that out to a nightly rate, it's about $17 a night. <laughs> what a deal. And if you think about it, renting that same room to a short-term guest at $50 a night is a lot better for me, but do you think your guest could find it as nice a place to stay in a hotel for such a low price? Probably not. So the guest is happy to be saving money while you're enjoying triple the passive income. I just love win-win situations, don't you? So let's review. Which relationship did you choose to have with someone living in your home? Was it a parent-to-child relationship, a landlord-to-tenant relationship, or a host-to-guest relationship? Well, if you pick number three, a host-to-guest relationship, then congratulations because you've chosen the relationship with the least amount of stress and the most income. In fact, there are two types of people in this world. Those who work for money by trading dollars for hours and those who enjoy passive income. Of all the ways to make money with all of these peer-to-peer -peer websites today, renting rooms by the night is one of the few that allows you to earn passive income as opposed to trading your hours for dollars like driving for Uber. But with short-term rentals, you could be out shopping while you're accepting reservations, you could be at the movies when your guests check in, and you could be sleeping when the money is deposited into your bank account. So now you know the importance of setting up a room to rent to earn the most money with the least amount of stress. So now let's go on to step number two and find out how much money you can make by getting creative with space. Let's look at some ways you can increase your income right in your own home. Now, I bet you're a bit like me and your philosophy is go big or go home, right? I mean, if you can make $1,000 from one room, then why not rent as many rooms and spaces as you can to really crank up the income? Let me share a quick story with you. Back when my husband and I first started renting our cozy cabin in the backyard, we used a website called Airbnb. And when it comes to creating a listing on Airbnb, it asks you what type of space do you have to rent? Not just rooms, but it lists all sorts of things like a couch, an igloo, I kid you not, a tree house, these are incredibly popular, a yurt, I didn't even know what a yurt was until I found Airbnb. It's a soft-sided structure with a wooden frame. Or maybe you have room 
for a train car on your property. I don't know. Or maybe even a bunk bed in a room shared with other strangers. Yes, you can rent out each individual bunk. So that got me to thinking. And one day I was sitting on the couch watching TV and I thought to myself, why isn't that closet under my stairs making me money? So we squeezed a twin-size bed under the slanted ceiling of the stairway, added some Harry Potter memorabilia, and rented it as the Harry Potter cupboard under the stairs room. It was just an experiment, but it turned out to be a hit. I was amazed at how many guests booked that tiny little closet so they could experience what it was like to live like Harry Potter. <laughs> so let me introduce you to this wonderful tool called Airbnb. This is the website that provides the opportunity for you to get creative with space and make money by renting just about any space where someone can sleep. Other websites don't let you do this. They restrict you to only whole house rentals. But Airbnb opens up the possibilities and it lets you ask the question, where can someone sleep in my house? And the answer is, wherever you can put a mattress, an air mattress, a sleeping bag, or just toss a blanket in a pillow somewhere. That space can become a profit center for you. So let me share with you some of the ways you can get creative with space. For example, one of my clients, Alma, has a glass enclosed sunroom on the back of her house. We added two large bookcases back to back to divide the room into a bedroom with a queen bed and then a sitting area with a small couch and a coffee table. Then we added some decorations to make it feel cozy and voila! The guests had their own little apartment with a private entrance and access to a private bathroom just inside. And by setting it up this way, it allowed Alma to feel safe, as a single woman living alone, to have strangers stay in her house. Now one of the things that I like to do to attract more guests is to create a themed room. This helps my listing stand out from the crowd, plus it gives guests more bang for their buck. I mean, when a guest is looking for a place to stay, they can rent any room for around $50 a night, or they can stay in a themed room, still pay about $50 a night, and have something to write home about, right? For example, one house that we sublet as a bed and breakfast, which simply means we rented out the individual rooms rather than the whole house, it was a five-bedroom, three-bath home in the suburbs of Los Angeles, and it came with a basement, which is really unusual for California. Now, normally, this basement would have been an undesirable room to rent. I mean, the pipes from the restroom above ran through the ceiling, which was a little noisy, to say the least. But with a little creativity, we turned it into the Black Pearl Pirate Room, and we decorated it like a berth on a ship. Then in the listing, we put a positive spin on the noisy pipe situation by describing the experience as being able to hear the sounds of the ocean as if you were on a pirate ship. We added a treasure chest with toy pirate gold, some hanging lanterns, and a porthole window to complete the illusion. And the fun part was that the entrance to the stairway was one side of the kitchen pantry door. Imagine this. You open one side and you have your shelves. They're filled with bread, canned food, all that stuff. But you open the other side of the pantry and you discover a secret stairway curving down out of sight. So in the listing we described it as and the entrance can only be found by those who already know where it is. Oh my gosh, people loved living like a pirate. Unfortunately, though, the owner sold the house after three years, but it was great while it lasted because we netted an average of $2,000 a month. But theming is a great way to attract guests and even turn an undesirable room into a unique experience. You just need a little imagination. So I hope I've gotten your creative juices flowing by now and you're looking around your home with a new perspective, seeing all the opportunities you have to make money simply by creating a space for someone to sleep for the night. So now let me show you how we make $9,000 a month from our two-story, five-bedroom, three-bath home in the suburbs of Los Angeles in the city of Pico Rivera. I mean, keep in mind that we are not where the tourists want to be. Check out that red circle. We are about 26 miles away from Hollywood and Santa Monica. That's where the tourists really want to be when they come to L.A. But if you look at a map, we're located dead center, with Universal Studios Hollywood 30 minutes to the northwest of us, and Disneyland is 30 minutes to the southeast, which is very centrally located from a tourist perspective. So that's why our prices are so low. Our base price is just $50 a night. But it works out because it's a deal for a tourist, and it adds up to financial freedom for us. 
Okay, so here we go. This is how we've made $9,000 a month with our two-story, five-bedroom, three-bath house in the suburbs of Pico Rivera, starting with the top floor, where we have three bedrooms and one shared bathroom. So upstairs, we've themed all the rooms, and you can see that the Ocean Beach room brings in about $2,000 per month. The Hollywood room averages $1,500 a month, and we discovered that our house is about five miles away from a casino which attracts professional poker players of all things. So we created a poker player's paradise room just for them and it brings in a steady $800 a month. Now downstairs we have the garden sunrise room which believe it or not it used to be my laundry room but when my husband saw how much money we were making just from the shed in our backyard, he got inspired and he says, we're turning that into a guest room. So he pulled out the washer and dryer and added a full-size bed and now that room brings in an average of $700 a month. Okay, then you'll notice that the front living room brings in about $500 per month. Why so low? Well, because what we're doing is renting a couch in the front living room for twenty dollars a night and that means there is no privacy I mean people are coming and going through the front door and walking through the front living room while the guest is sitting there working or sleeping on the couch and they just don't seem to mind one bit okay so then we have the yellow room which is a regular room and we've themed it with a color yellow it brings in eight hundred dollars per month and of course the Harry Potter cupboard under the stairs room which makes about five hundred dollars a month as well now, the great thing about Airbnb is that you're not limited to just what you have indoors. You can rent any space on your property, too. So if we go outside to the backyard, you could see that we have the cozy cabin making about $1,500 a month. That's right. When we started out, it made $1,000. But as I've implemented my income maximization strategies, we've gotten it cranking at an average of $1,500 a month now. And in the summertime, we also set up a tent with two queen air mattresses in it, and it generates an extra $700 a month. And if you add it all up, it comes to a total of an average of $9,000 a month. And keep in mind that this is with only a 70% occupancy rate on average. So let me ask you this. What kind of a difference would an extra $9,000 a month make in your life? Or let's say you didn't even get nearly this crazy, right? And you just rented one room for an extra $1,000 a month. That's $12,000 a year. That would go a long way toward paying off debt or saving for something special, wouldn't it? And think about it. What is it costing you every day that you aren't renting at least one room in your house? That monthly income really adds up, doesn't it? For example, wouldn't it be great to pay off just one credit card? then that money that you were paying toward your debt every month would be freed up to do other things with. Because I believe that by paying off your credit cards, it's the same thing as giving yourself a raise every month. I mean, this can really help move up your debt freedom date. And I don't know about you, but I can't think of an easier way to make an extra $1,000 a month than by making passive income from renting a room or space in my house. Oh, and after I showed you all the rooms and spaces that we rent in our house, I bet you're wondering, hey, Sue, where do you stay, <laughs> right? Well, we have the downstairs front bedroom, so we can monitor the guest comings and goings, and then we share the kitchen with our guests. We live for free with the Airbnb income covering our mortgage, our living expenses, and there's extra to save each month. And that's all with just renting rooms for a cheap $50 per night. But you know what? I'm betting you can charge more than us, especially if you live five miles or less from where the guests really want to be. And you're probably thinking, wow, Sue, what's it like to live in a house filled with so many people? Well, let me tell you, it is a blast. It's so awesome to meet adventurous, cool, down-to-earth people from all around the world. And over the years, our guests have cooked for us and shared their favorite foods with us. And I'm a bit of a foodie, so it's been really awesome to try all these traditional dishes like tagine from Morocco, paella, that's Rosa, from Spain, okonomiyaki from Japan, and all these colorful, tasty dishes from China. Oh my goodness, they love their hot food. Mm. And some of our guests have become such good friends that we've traveled to go visit them, and we've gotten to stay for free in Michigan, Czech Republic and Switzerland and I just want to share this with you 
that when your home is making you so much money that you don't need to go to work anymore, you get to stay home, roll out of bed whenever you like, and fully enjoy your guests. I mean, it feels like you're on vacation all the time. It's so relaxing just talking to folks over coffee about the fun things they plan to do that day, and sometimes maybe even tagging along, who knows, or just doing whatever you enjoy all day while everyone else is out and about. I mean, the Airbnb hosting lifestyle is incredibly stress-free, and I highly recommend it. Alrighty, let's go on now and talk about how you go about finding and attracting a steady stream of great guests. And it's very easy once you know how. So let me share with you the three key ingredients needed, whether you choose to share your space with them or not. First of all, you need to use the right website. You've already heard me mention the website Airbnb a few times, and using Airbnb has been the best way to find great guests, and enough guests to keep a steady flow of income coming in. See, in the beginning, I tried a dozen different booking engines that were all similar to Airbnb on the surface. I mean, you may have heard of some of them, such as VRBO, Flipkey, HomeAway, Nineflats, Wimdu, Expedia, Bookings, just to name a few. But I kept running into different problems with each one of them and not one of them could do everything that Airbnb did. For example, okay, I'm not going to name names, but some were lacking the communication tools to effectively lock in a reservation with a guest. Some charged exorbitant annual fees. Some had such little traffic that after a year I had hosted only one guest. <laughs> well, that's definitely not going to pay the bills. Some didn't even have a calendar sync feature, and I wound up having double bookings, that's where two different guests show up to stay in the same room at the same time. <laughs> Disaster. Meanwhile, Airbnb was allowing me to create as many listings as I wanted to for free. They were driving insane traffic to my listings, which translated into a fully booked calendar and a steady stream of year-round income. And they provided all the tools I needed to clearly communicate with my guests. And best of all, Airbnb gives you all the tools to easily flex with requests to make changes to reservations so you can lock them in, rather than losing the bookings. Having the ability to make changes to reservations has saved so many bookings for me because it seems like the guest plans are always changing. And some of the other websites don't let you do that. So even though I was nervous about having all of my eggs in one basket, I finally came around to the realization that no other website has my back like Airbnb. And the second way you can find great guests is by screening the guests to make sure you avoid any problems. I like to say if life is like a box of chocolates, you never know what you're going to get. And with my screening rules, I can help you avoid the nuts. So through a simple screening process that I've developed, I use this template to ask the guests three questions before they can be approved to stay. I ask them, where are you coming from? What will you be doing while you're in town? And who will you be traveling with? Now, the wisdom behind these three key questions has come from many, many uncomfortable experiences learned over the years. But I saw a pattern, and I realized that when you boil all of the problems down, they fall into one of these three categories which then makes it very easy to identify them and avoid those uncomfortable situations going forward. So when a guest answers these three seemingly innocent questions, I'm given all the information I need to know whether to accept them or not. So let's go over the right and the wrong answers to these questions so you'll know how to do it too. Starting with where are you coming from? Okay, the right answer that you want to hear is something that sounds like I'm coming from somewhere that is at least 45 minutes away from where you live. Now why is that? Because it makes sense that they'd need a place to sleep overnight, doesn't it? Otherwise, why not just drive back home and sleep there? I found that guests who ask to book that live in my same city or less than 45 minutes away, they tend to bring, shall we say, drama with them. Trust me, you do not want to invite drama into your home. For example, here are some of the answers that I've received from guests that I've declined. One lady answered me by saying, My two children and I were just evicted from our home in Compton. How far is it to your place on the bus? <laughs> and one gentleman told me, Well, my wife just kicked me out, and your place is cheaper than a hotel. <laughs> so my niche 
my ideal guest that I want to host in my home is someone who's on vacation. And both of these folks lived less than 30 minutes away from me and were clearly not on vacation. So unfortunately, they didn't fit my criteria and I had to decline their request to stay. Now, what kind of answers are we looking for when we ask the question, what will you be doing while you're in town? The right answer is something outside of your home, such as going to a sporting event, or the beach, or a convention, an amusement park. Maybe they're going to visit family in the neighborhood. As long as your house is not their destination, you'll avoid those disruptive parties. And instead, you'll have happy, relaxed guests who get up early and tend to be out all day, often not returning home until late at night. <laughs> this is what you want. But the wrong answer would sound something like, oh, we're just needing a place to study for the weekend. Yeah, study. How much parking is available around your house? <laughs> Can you hear it, right? This is definitely a red flag because guests only usually have one car. So if they need more parking, <clears throat> that sounds like they'll be inviting a bunch of their friends over to help them study, <laughs> right? Okay, so let's talk about who will you be traveling with? Now, when it comes to the question, who will you be traveling with, this is a very important question because what you're doing here is screening for third-party bookings. My worst experience was when a mother booked on behalf of her adult child, and the child didn't obey my house rules. And now, I understand it's because they didn't have any skin in the game. I mean, the child hadn't read my listing or agreed to my house rules. The child hadn't paid with their own money, so they had no reason to take care of my things. And worst of all, they weren't being reviewed after the stay, so they had no reason to behave nicely. These are three of the main ingredients that make it safe for hosts to let strangers stay in their home. But if a guest has had someone else book for them, then all the protections for the host are eliminated. So the correct wording you're looking for in response to this question is that they will be one of the people in the group. And it sounds something like, I will be traveling with. <laughs> if you hear that, then you know you have a viable booking. But if they say that they're booking for someone else, you must immediately decline the booking. However, we never want to give up an opportunity to get a booking. So I'll immediately follow up with a message with further instructions telling them, if that person would like to create an Airbnb account and book directly with me, I'd be happy to accept their reservation. And you know, 90% of the time, that's just what they do. And it all works out. And I figure for those 10% that don't book, it's all for the best. No regrets. And that brings me to the brilliance of Airbnb's airtight review system. This is what builds trust and transparency into the system. Check it out. Guests are reviewed on how clean they left your place, how well they communicated, and if they followed your house rules. At the end of each stay, both the guest and the host leave a blind review for the other, which means you can't see what they wrote until you've both posted your reviews, or that 14 days have passed. And once the review is posted, it cannot be changed. And these reviews give guests what I call reputation capital in the Airbnb world. It's like a credit score for their behavior. Travelers need good reviews so that future hosts will accept their request to stay. The better their reviews are, the more places they'll be invited to stay. The worse their reviews are, they know that they won't be allowed to enjoy the benefits of staying in people's homes, and they'll be back to staying in hotels. This is a very powerful incentive for guests to be on their best behavior and follow your house rules. So it's important to understand that it's the responsibility of the host to review the guests honestly. And the host's review is speaking to future hosts, telling them what kind of a guest they can expect to have in their home. And as a community, Airbnb hosts do not give out bad reviews lightly. We know that if a host had to say something negative about a guest, it was pretty bad. So we watch each other's backs and we give honest reviews to protect everyone. In fact, I once had an inquiry from a gentleman whose reviews were awful. Several of his previous hosts reported that he hadn't followed their house rules and that he was just disrespectful in general. And when I declined him, he demanded to know why. You know, he was upset. Well, when I decline a guest, as a rule, I don't respond anymore after that. It's the final word. It's just a policy. But I wanted to say, have you seen your reviews? 
<laughs> because if a guest has shown no respect, no appreciation for someone opening their home to them and providing a clean, safe, comfortable place to sleep, then there's no reason to expect that they're going to suddenly become more respectful or appreciative in my home. Does that make sense? And as an Airbnb host, you always have the right to decide who stays in your home. Okay, so now, besides ensuring that you get great guests by allowing you to screen your guests and protecting you with the airtight review system, Airbnb provides everything else you need as well. From payment processing, to worldwide marketing, to 24-hour customer support, and all the tools to keep both parties safe and secure. It's the one website that delivers everything you need to run a profitable short-term rental business all in one place. All right, so let's sum up what we've learned today. Now you know how to set up a room to rent in a way that keeps you safe, maintains your privacy, and gives you freedom to travel and make money. Now you know how to create multiple profit centers all around your home. I mean, if each mattress is a money machine, then you can add as many as you want to meet your income goals. Now you know that Airbnb is the best website to use that provides all the tools you need to run a safe and profitable short-term rental business and how to use it to attract great guests. So I hope I've helped to remove some of the concerns you've had about renting rooms to short-term guests today because I believe it really is the best way to make life-changing money. I mean, if my family came to me and said, Sue, you're an entrepreneur and you've had lots of businesses over the years, what would you say is the fastest, easiest way to make money now? And I wouldn't hesitate to recommend short-term rentals. And I actually have done just that because, in fact, my daughter, she owns a duplex. She lives in one of the units and rents the other on Airbnb. And my brothers and sisters, nieces and nephews all rent rooms in their homes. It's hilarious at family get-togethers because when you get a message from Airbnb, the phone makes this little unique bling sound. And with that many Airbnb hosts in one room, it sounds like a symphony. <laughs> but I know you may still have more questions, so stick with me because in just a minute, I'm going to be answering some of the most common questions that I get from people who are ready to get started but just need a little more information first. So whether you're ready to get started renting a room on Airbnb now or later in the future, I'd like to give you a link. It's airbnb.com slash r slash get started. And if you click through this link to Airbnb, then you'll be taken to a page that looks like this, where you'll create your account and your first listing. Oh, and this is the other bonus I was talking about. This link is important because when you use it, Airbnb is going to give you an extra $64 when you host your first guest in the first 150 days. How doable is that? And yes, full disclosure, I may also receive a financial reward from Airbnb as well. But I just want to give you that link so you can get the $64 bonus, especially if you're already planning on making extra money with Airbnb anyway. And as I promised, I have a special offer for you. I want to invite you to start on the path to becoming a streamer with me. I've created a new course called the Airbnb Success Formula Boot Camp, and it's designed to walk you through getting your room set up, creating your listing, and hosting your first guest in 30 days or less. This is a fast-paced course where I give you all of my systems and guide you through all four phases of the short-term rental process to get you set up and hosting like a boss. First, you'll start by using my experience creation system to identify exactly what part of the property you'll rent out and who your ideal guest will be. We're going to really go deep and study where the three key components converge, what brings people into town, what you have to offer, and who your ideal guest is, in order to determine the best way to furnish and theme the room. By the time you finish this phase, you will become an expert experience creator. I mean, this is a skill that you'll be able to use going forward to have an edge over the competition in any short-term rental market. This module is worth $500 alone. In fact, you can make a business out of helping people set up their Airbnbs, charging up to $2,000 for your services. Okay, next, you'll set up the room by furnishing and decorating it to attract your ideal guest. I give you my expanded furnishing checklist to set up everything the right way. It includes tips and tricks for automating your business, as well as ensuring your investment is protected. This checklist will save you tons of time by knowing what to add and what not to add, and you won't waste money on things that don't add value to the guest's stay. 
every detail that goes into furnishing a short-term rental with specific quantities and the reasons for why you need them with what brand to buy and where to buy it organized in one easy reference document all from my hard-earned experience is easily worth five hundred dollars okay now once the place is furnished and staged You'll learn how to take professional quality pictures and be ready for phase three, where we'll create your Airbnb listing. Now, Airbnb is a very robust booking engine, and it provides all the tools you need to be a successful host. And this is where you'll learn how to use it to your advantage. You'd be amazed at how many hosts get this wrong. And I can't emphasize enough how important it is to get your listing done right. I mean, the process of taking a guest on the journey from just being a looky-loo to getting them to click on your listing and then put their money down and book with you is not easy. You have to have the right pictures that capture their attention. The words you use in the title and description are critical to getting traffic, building trust, delivering on your promises, and getting bookings. I want to make sure that you stand out from the competition and wow those guests into booking with you. In the listing creation system, I don't leave anything out. I give you all of my secrets for creating listings that win bookings, period. And I teach you how to use all of the features that Airbnb offers so you can automate your business. By learning how to use Airbnb the right way, you're going to set yourself apart from 90% of the other hosts out there and be able to run circles around the competition. My listing creation system is so powerful and key to the success of your business that it's a $1,000 value. So once you've followed the steps and put the polishing touches on your Airbnb listing, this is the moment of truth where you go live and officially open for business. But before you do, I have a huge bonus for you. I want to set you up for success and make sure everything is set up correctly. You see, there are several things that can devastate your Airbnb business if you don't know the implications of all of the settings in your listing. I've talked to new hosts that got blindsided the minute they went live and they were shut down by Airbnb for making critical mistakes. Their business was dead in the water from the moment they opened their doors. Oh my God, it was so sad. But you are a member of my community and you will not be blindsided. Because one thing I've learned is that it's always good to have a second set of eyes to take a look and make sure everything's done right. You know how when you're too close to the project, it's easy to miss things? So when it's time to go live, before you do, you're going to schedule your listing review session with me, where we'll meet live over the internet and go over everything together, making sure everything is set up correctly. And then once your listing is approved, then you'll go live and officially be open for business. This is a $500 value. And if you count the fact that if you unwittingly made a critical error in your setup and Airbnb shut down your business right from the get-go, then this listing review bonus is actually priceless. So consider it your safety net. So, okay, once your listing is live, you're ready to host your first guest. And my students typically get their first guest within 24 hours of going live. So I tell them, okay, be ready. So to get set up for the flood of inquiries coming your way, you'll put my inbox communication system in place to handle the booking requests, accept reservations, and automate check-in like a pro. And what this will do for you is position you to be able to make the most amount of money with the least amount of effort, a $500 value. And don't forget my nightly rate pricing system where you'll learn how to price your listing competitively in any market. And my philosophy is, Let's not leave any money on the table. I'm going to show you how to use my five income maximization strategies to boost your income exponentially. I'll teach you my tricks for maximizing your income year round, adding multiple streams of income from secondary services that you can offer, and increasing your occupancy rate. All of this is a $1,000 value. I mean, I don't hold anything back in this course. I give you all of the secrets I've learned over the last decade for squeezing every last drop of income out of an Airbnb business. So now that you've got your place furnished and staged, your optimized Airbnb listing is firing on all cylinders, and your automations are in place. It comes down to simply handling the daily duties of running an Airbnb business. And in phase four, you'll use my daily business management system to run your business in less than 10 hours per month. I mean, can you really even call that work? <laughs> and if you can earn a full-time income in just 10 hours per month, what will you do with the rest of your time? And this comprehensive training is valued at $4,500 to learn how to set up a short-term rental business the right way, right from the start, with proven systems that allow you to automate your business, 
plus the bonus live listing review that gives you the peace of mind knowing that you've harnessed the full potential of Airbnb. And all of this paves the way for your home to generate passive income for you and your family on a regular basis. So let me encourage you to get enrolled right now. And I want to give you an incredible deal. So today I'm not charging $4,500. Instead, you can join for just $4.97. And this boot camp is designed to help you get your first guest in 30 days or less. Now, you can enroll in the course today and work through each phase over the next four weeks and accomplish that pretty easily. But I've designed the course with some incentives. Yes, because this is a 30 day challenge and we want to have fun, right? So you're going to be competing against yourself and other students just like you for prizes. So the first prize is for everyone that accomplishes the overall goal of hosting their first guest in 30 days or less. You will be a winner. And I like a little mystery, so I'm not going to share with you what the prize is right now, but trust me, it is a nice one. And then at the end of the month, prizes will be given out to the person with the fastest time for furnishing and setup of their Airbnb as well as a prize for the fastest time from going live to getting your first booking. So just to give you an idea, my fastest times for furnishing and setting up a private room, I've done it in as little as seven days. And the fastest time for going live and getting my first booking, <laughs> believe it or not, it was seven minutes. Oh yeah. So get ready to race the clock and do it for time. And by the way, the way I'm tracking it is by the timestamps on your posts in our private Facebook group. So in the course, you'll be prompted at the right time and given the link with instructions for what to post and where to post it. And of course, our Facebook group is also for supporting one another, cheering each other on, and generally having fun, right? So now I want to show you, when you click the button below to enroll in the Airbnb Success Formula Boot Camp, you'll see this screen. Here's where you enter your billing and payment details. After that, you're going to receive a confirmation email for your payment as well as a welcome email with your login information. So let me encourage you not to waste any time and get enrolled right now. And of course it all comes with my 30 day money back guarantee so you have nothing to lose. My motto is, if I give a man a fish, he eats for a day. But if I teach a man to fish, he'll never go hungry again. Because with the knowledge you get from this course, you'll be able to use it to produce a monthly income that pays you forever. It may even allow you to quit your job, pay off your debt, pay off the house, travel, and do more of what you love. I mean, most people would grab this offer with both hands, and I can't wait to be working with you to make sure your Airbnb business is a success. So please get enrolled before the end of the webinar today. And I want to thank all of you who have invested your time today to learn about this great money-making opportunity. And if you found this information helpful or enlightening or, dare I say, life-changing, then please click the link to share it. And while we're on the subject of links to share, like I promised, here's the link to download my basic furnishing checklist. It'll help you save money, save time, and get your room set up the right way to rent out to either short-term or long-term guests. It's up to you. So I want to wish you the best, and also I want to answer some of the questions that people ask me that you may also be wondering about. Okay, write this down. My email address is sue at vacationrentalsinla.net. So rentals is plural. And if after this webinar you're on the fence and you want to get started but you still have like a burning question that I didn't answer, feel free to shoot me an email. Okay, so now let me go over some of the most frequently asked questions. Number one on most people's minds is, what if my city has restrictions on short-term rentals? Well, in a few cities, it's absolutely prohibited to rent a house on a short-term basis. And in some cities, it's simply restricted. So all you have to do to find out is search on Google for short-term rental rules in your city. For the most part, cities are supportive of short-term rentals and the rules and guidelines that they've set up are so that everyone can get along. And these rules, they usually fall into one of three categories. They either determine how long people can stay or how many people can stay or how many short-term rentals there could be within a certain radius. And it's easy enough to abide by the rules and still make a ton of money with Airbnb. In fact, I found that of the four different business models that I use, the bed and breakfast model is by far the most lucrative and it has the fewest restrictions. The bed and breakfast model simply means that you're renting a room in your home as opposed to a whole house. 
I mean, it doesn't mean that you're offering breakfast. <laughs> in fact, most local laws, they actually favor homeowners who live in the home and rent a room to short-term guests. They have the most lenient rules. So you're in a great position. And when the local laws dictate that a guest needs to stay for 30 days or more, it's not a deal breaker. There are actually plenty of people who need a place to stay from one to three months or more at a time. And they're usually traveling professionals. This is a very lucrative niche if you could provide the amenities that they need. And yes, I know you're going over the 30-day threshold and crossing over into the time frame controlled by tenant law, which means you might have to deal with an eviction situation if they didn't pay. But the way that Airbnb handles longer term stays, they collect and process the payments into your account a month at a time. And if there's a problem collecting the money, Airbnb goes after it for you. So to comply with local laws that require stays of 30 days or more, it's simply a matter of identifying who your ideal guest is that needs a longer term stay and targeting that type of traveler through your Airbnb listing. And of course, I show you how to do that in the course in phase one, the experience creation system. And speaking of different niches, many people ask, well, what about dogs? And that would be an excellent niche to serve. Airbnb hosts who allow guests to bring a dog, they make extra money because the demand is so high for travelers with pets these days. So if you have a yard or a dog run nearby, or you could provide the paraphernalia that makes travelers with dogs more comfortable, then definitely go for it. And I just want to remind you to get in and join the Airbnb Success Formula Boot Camp for just $4.97, which is an incredible price for everything you get. Get in now and just try it out. And you've got my 30-day guarantee, which conveniently lines up with the 30-day timeline for the boot camp. Imagine where you'll be 30 days from now. I mean, if you've got time right now to throw yourself into a new project by furnishing a room or space and creating an Airbnb listing, then from experience, I know you could be making money in the next seven days but you won't know unless you try. So what do you have to lose? So go ahead and get started right now and remember that I'll be there to help you. I'm only an email away if you have any questions. And if you're wondering, well, what if the guests break something? Well, that's a great question. And there are three answers to that. Actually, three levels, if you will. Okay, so for example, let's say that something gets broken, like a cup, or at the very least, something needs to be replaced from time to time, like sheets, towels, or a coffee maker. I consider these the cost of doing business. You know, these expenses will come out of your profits, just like any other business. However, if there's some unusual damage caused by the guest, you can send them a request through Airbnb to ask them to reimburse you. And this is super cool. It's called the Resolutions Tool. I love it because the first thing you do is try to resolve it directly with the guest first. You know, just ask them to make it right. And sometimes they do. But if they refuse to reimburse you, then you can simply escalate the claim to Airbnb and they will arbitrate the matter for you. And it's awesome because every time you accept a reservation, you have to click to agree to Airbnb's $1 million host guarantee. So you're covered automatically. And Airbnb has definitely got your back. Now, the third answer to that is, let's say something major happened and it falls under your homeowner's policy. Well, the good news is that now you can get a special commercial insurance policy to cover your short-term rental business that covers not only damage to your home or if your guests get hurt, but it'll also cover loss of income if you need to shut down for a while to do repairs. You can easily find these insurance companies online by Googling vacation rental insurance in your area. Uh, two that I know of are Proper Insurance and Lloyd's of London, but they're regional, so it's best to find the carrier that's licensed in your area. And another big concern is, what if the guests steal my stuff? <sighs> to be honest, chances are slim to none that they'll steal anything. Mostly because nothing else is going to fit in their luggage, trust me. That is the last thing on their mind. But if anything does go missing, Airbnb has insurance to cover you and a system for handling situations like that. So by now I know you're really excited about doing this and you can't wait to get started. But there's just one thing holding you back from financial freedom. Maybe your spouse or partner just isn't on board and they're shaking their head saying, I don't want strangers in my house. Well, to that I say, no problem. I'm going to be sending out an email with the recording of today's webinar to everyone who attended. So what you could do is be looking out for the email and then plan for a time when the two of you can sit down and watch it together. Because you're just like me and my husband and we had the same exact problem. But I know for a fact that once you get on the same page, 
you'll be unstoppable. Okay, well that is all that we have time for today. So I just want to thank you for investing your time and energy into being on this webinar with me today. Thank you so much for letting me share this great money-making opportunity with you and this valuable knowledge. My hope is that you'll use it to find the financial freedom you've been looking for. That's my dream, my purpose in doing this. And I know that if you commit to joining my Airbnb Success Formula Boot Camp in the next 30 days, you'll be on your way. And if you found value in this information today, please share it. Your family and friends will thank you. So once again, just a reminder before we sign off, here's the link to the basic furnishing checklist as my thank you for staying until the end and the magical $64 link to Airbnb that you won't find anywhere else, airbnb.com slash r slash get started. And before I go, here's my email address, sue at vacationrentalsinla.net, so you can contact me with any other questions you or your partner may have about the course. So now you have all the tools you need to be successful, which means it's time for me to let you go and let you get started setting up your new business. And this is Sue Oyuela saying, Bye for now.